At long last, welcome to the installation video for the Doomsday Diesel transmission adapter for the Mercedes-Benz OM6 OT series and applicable M series engines. It was a long road to get to this point. I am so happy to be sharing this video with you. It's just a supplemental video for the written instructions. This is to give you the visual cues, show you how everything works. I don't actually call out torque specs in this video because the torque specs for each adapter are going to be a little different. This is to just show you how everything goes together in case you're having trouble following along with the written instructions. So, like I said, it's been a long road to get here. A ton of time, design time went into everything. There were a lot of components that I really wanted to patent because I think I've got something a lot different here than anything else available out on the market. So come on in, let's go through. We're gonna install some Jeep adapters here in this video. So can't wait to see what you guys think. Let's dive on in. The first step with any adapter, manual or automatic, is we're gonna mate the plate to the block. So the first thing we need to do is clean the mating surface on the block here. Make sure our oil pan is flush or past the block surface. A lot of these rear sumps, when you put them on, you can actually mount them so they stick back beyond this face and that would screw up the adapter plate how it mounts. So make sure that's flush. Then I like to take um, a scraper and go around, scrape any dirt off, then go around with brake parts cleaner, wash it all down really good. Your kit will come with two new M10 dowel pins. You'll just put those in the back of the block. Then we're ready to put our plate on. So I'm just going to temporarily mount the plate on here for right now. I'm just going to put two of these bolts in to hold the plate on tight. For the sake of speeding things up in this video, I'm going to use my cordless impact driver. I've got it on kind of like a finish screw setting. It only goes not even, I can't even turn it in my hand. So I prefer that you install all of this and torque it with a normal wrench. Don't use an impact driver or an impact wrench. That's all the tighter this will get it. And that's okay if you're just installing, you know, speeding the screws in and then torquing them with a wrench. But we're going to tighten this up here, make sure everything fits nice and flush. Now, the big difference with my adapter kit for the 6 aught series is how I mount the starter right here. So I've got these recessed holes. You can take this bolt, put it in there and thread into the starter. The problem with this is you have to remove the transmission to get to the starter bolts. If you want to mount it like this though, I've made it like this so that you can. These sit recessed in here. So I don't provide the hardware if you go this route because I'm assuming most people aren't going to go this route. If you do, it's a standard socket head cap screw M10 and then I actually use a 3 8 washer to fit inside here. Here's an M10 washer. As you can see, it's too big. It goes through into your starter like so. Enough about that though. I wanna show you the cool thing that I've come up with. So these holes are threaded, which you'll see down inside, and your kit's gonna come with these little inserts. Now they're gonna have a red coating on them, and you have to scrub that off. I like to soak them in a little acetone and then you use a stainless steel brush to scrub that crap off. It's actually uh, pressure activated glue, but half the time it doesn't work. So I scrub that off. So you'll soak it in red Loctite and then take a small pry bar or a big flathead screwdriver and we're gonna thread this in here. Now the reason I've, I do it like this, I have the plate butted up against the block and so that'll show me when this thing is bottomed out. You can install these on the bench, but then you have to be really careful that you install it flush. If you install it past the front side of the plate, then your adapter plate won't marry down flat. This way you can't go 
beyond flush. And you do want to get it as far in as you can. And you don't have to tighten it. You don't have to tighten it at all. That's not going to do you any good. I'm going to just turn it in until it stops and then let the red lock tight set up. That's usually going to take a little while. Now for the rest of the adapter plate installation, you'll just put your socket head cap screws in here. And you'll notice in this video, um, on these plates at this point in time, I don't have the rear sump pan bolt pattern on the plates. I just have the front sump pan pattern. On this particular engine, I've got a rear sump on it, so I can't use these bottom three holes. I'm not worried about it. The block is what matters for the strength. So follow your written instructions. Apply blue Loctite or medium strength thread locker to all these. I'm not going to do the lubrication and the Loctite in this video because this is just a mock-up. I'm not actually permanently installing this adapter on this engine. And I will not call out torque specs in this video because this is a generic video for all of my 6 aught series adapters. So all of your bolts are Loctited and installed, torqued while the Loctite is still wet. Now we're ready to mount up our starter. One other point I forgot is the OM648 starter will work on the 606. I have one here. Mates up just fine. The problem is you can only marry this um, to this adapter with the bolts going through the adapter plate from inside the bell housing. So I definitely don't recommend using the 648 starter. Yes, they are cheaper and easier to find, but you can't mount them externally. Instead, we're going to get our stock 606 starter. Get your socket head cap screws with washers. You don't even have to drill the threads out of the starter. These will pass right through the threads. And it's as simple as that. Now, if you're wondering what you should use on the starter bolts themselves, I would probably use either blue Loctite or anti-seize. I want to put them in uncoated, and I definitely want to use red Loctite because you'll never get them out if you use red Loctite. The, the beauty of this setup and this design is as you're unthreading those bolts, if you're trying to take the starter off, it'd be trying to tighten the insert against the block. So you don't have to worry about driving that insert out of the block. Now it's up to you if you want to use Loctite because you're afraid of the bolts vibrating loose. Go ahead and use some blue Loctite. At a minimum though, you want to use anti-seize um, because the inserts are stainless steel. And with a steel bolt, um, technically that could corrode over time. So you want to have something on there. You don't want to put them in dry. I almost forgot some of these kits will actually have a spacer plate and you'll want to put your dowel pins into the adapter plate and then the spacer is designed to be a nice tight fit over those dowels so that when you're sliding the engine down into the engine bay the plate doesn't fall off. If you are having troubles with this plate falling off you can get some sticky grease and just put a couple dabs on the back side and that should kind of glue it to the aluminum adapter plate to keep it in place. And that's the installation of the adapter plate and the starter. Next, we'll move on to the crankshaft adapter. For the manual transmission crankshaft adapter, we're going to start by taking our flex plate bolts out. In this example, I'm going to remove the flex plate, but I'm going to leave the flywheel this is the NA606 version. I've seen these on the 603s as well. It's actually a flywheel. It's got a ring gear on the outside. If you have a turbo 606 um, or some other engines, they actually have two of these flex plates stacked on top of each other, a ring gear, a starter ring gear around the outside, and then the whole works is riveted together. And then they have a, fly, a flex plate washer on top. So in that case, you would take the washer off and then put your flex plate back on. In this case, this piece goes away. Again, we're gonna clean our mating surface. 
it's ready for the crankshaft adapter to go on. Our crankshaft adapter indexes off this shoulder and lines up with this dowel pin. So this dowel pin here only sticks out a little bit. I do incorporate that into this base crankshaft adapter piece. So if you decide to have the whole crankshaft adapter and flywheel match balanced, you can um, know where to clock it. You'll of course have to indicate on the other half of the crankshaft adapter and the flywheel what orientation they make up. But this part can only go on one way. Now, this is a super tight fit and depending on your crankshaft, you may have to heat this part up to about 300 degrees to get it to go on. It's called a shrink fit. Once it cools down, it'll super tightly shrink down on that and you won't be able to pull this off. You'd actually have to heat this part up to pull it off. So you'll apply thread locker to the threads themselves, just a blue medium strength. And then this ARP lube you put on the bottom side of the head so that um, basically just lubricates it as the head's spinning against the metal. Now ARP specifically says don't use impacts on their hardware. So once you've torqued this part to spec, that's done. And if you did have to heat it up to get it on, you'll want to get it torqued while it's still warm. If you don't, you could have um, in inaccurate torque numbers because you're actually trying to draw this on. So this bottom half of the crankshaft adapter is standard for all of my OM6 manual transmission adapters. The top half is specific to your transmission. So this looks like the crankshaft that your transmission was originally married to. So these are going to be different for your transmission. So this can only go on one of two ways. Now this outer lip here indexes off this inner lip here. So make very, be very careful you don't ding this lip. Same thing here. It's a different, different ARP flywheel bolt, so you can't get them mixed up. You'll do the same thing with the thread locker and lube under the head. Now the beauty of this piece versus a standard crankshaft is you can just take this over to your press, press the bearing in. You don't have to do it on the back of the engine. So you can have that already pressed in before you do the final installation. And then we're ready for our flywheel. So our factory flywheel is going to go on just like it would. You're treating this piece like the crankshaft that your uh, transmission was originally married to. So your stock pilot bearing and stock hardware to mount your flywheel. Or if you want to go aftermarket, anything that worked for your original engine should work with this. So if you want to use your ARP flywheel bolts for your flywheel itself, you can. Aftermarket flywheel should be no problem. I don't actually have the half inch bolts to mount this Jeep flywheel up. So I'm going to take this off. The only last thing to check, just because there are discrepancies in manufacturers, is come over here and make sure your starter nose is clearing your flywheel. You just spin it on there. If it doesn't clear and you start it up anyway, it's going to self clearance and then your flywheel could be loose. So make sure this spins freely and isn't touching. Okay, so pretending that we have our flywheel or our flex plate and our torque converter, everything's married up, everything's ready to go. Now we're ready to put the bell housing on. So install your dowel pins. Now, of course, this is a lot easier on camera right here because I've got the bell housing off the transmission. You're gonna be under the truck probably cussing and fighting this thing in. Once you get it on though, just put your hardware in, follow the written instructions. You're gonna apply medium strength thread locker to anything that threads into the adapter plate. Any of the bolts that pass through and have nuts on the back or lock nuts, so you don't have to lock tight those. Once you get everything installed and torqued, your transmission is officially married to your OM6-odd engine 
and you are ready to start it up and go for a drive. So thanks for checking the video out. Even if you aren't a customer, you're just wanting to check out how things go together. Maybe you're thinking about being a customer. I hope you will be. For those of you who are, thank you very much for your support. You help me live my dream every day, building awesome stuff like this. So, of course, if you have questions, you can always call and email me. And with that, thanks, and we'll see you in another video.